intentionality, innovation, and a values-based mission. These are just some of the key attributes that make up a successful CPG brand. But how do companies achieve these goals and communicate them successfully to the consumer? That's what we're going to cover in this special segment we filmed at the 2024 Natural Products Expo West in Anaheim, California. We're going to hear the sharpest insights from various leaders at SPINS, as well as in the venture capital, manufacturing, and retail sectors. If you want to educate yourself on the latest in CPG thought leadership, stay with us. Hello everyone, this is Brian Choi, Managing Partner and CEO of the Food Institute. We're here at Expo West 2024 at the SPINS booth. I have here with me Catherine Peters, Head of Industry Relations at SPINS. Welcome to the program. Thank you. So for those that might not know who you are, can you describe your role and your title and what you do here at SPINS? Sure, I uh, am Catherine Peters, I'm Head of Industry Relations. I've been here uh, going on 17 years now. And my role really focuses on how we build the connective tissue for spins across the industry, all really in support of all the things we're trying to do for better, you know, planetary health, health for people, our communities, animals, et cetera. So it's all about how can we all keep moving forward um, profitably and for the good of all these things. Right, and so today's theme in terms of the interview is about innovation. So mm -hmm. how does spins define innovation? Like how do you define innovation? Well, certainly innovation can mean a number of things, but in, in my mind, and often how we think about it, it's, it's places that we're pushing forward in new ways. Um, whether that's in packaging, whether that's in product formulations, whether it's in a um, bringing uh, new ingredients into uh, formulations that are different than anyone's done before. It's, it's all about how we keep raising the bar. Right. In many ways, is a great way to think about innovation. Got it. And then for your clients across the ecosystem, how does the data really help drive the innovation for your individual stakeholders that work with SPINs? It's, it's really, the to me, the answer in today's life cycle, product life cycle, is moving faster than ever. And if you only go by instinct, chances are you're gonna miss a window, whether it's the window of figuring out the sweet spot of the ingredient that's about to break, find, it's within SPINs, insights you can find the little if, if you know the secret sauce in the algorithm to figure out what are those adjacencies where you think that innovation is going to happen or let's say once you use our insights and you get the right product formulation it's am i taking it to the right retail points of distribution so it doesn't even stop with just the innovation of the formula there's still so many more pieces and spins data and insights can really help you nail that product life cycle so that you're in it and, and sort of push forward by it in those tailwinds rather than potentially catching a headwind and not making it. Right. Well, it's very, very interesting. Innovation continues to be at the forefront of many companies, especially in this type of environment where it's slower growth, maybe more risks. So tell, tell us how Spins works directly with some, you know, with the companies. Maybe share some, a couple of the, some case studies on on, sure. on highlighting the, the innovation cycle uh, of Spins. Uh, uh, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, I think when you look across, let's say, the last ten years, in many cases, when it came to quote innovation, people, you know, people were called it kind of synonymous with just launching new products. Right. And launching new products often just meant how much could you get to shelf? How much could you try to you know, take as much shelf space as you can? Or how quickly just could you sort of spray and pray, for lack of a better word, right? right? And what we've really seen now, especially with what's going on in the capital markets, is that brands have to be very measured. Mm -hmm. You have to really, uh, you can't make mistakes. So while there have been less product launches in the last few years, it doesn't mean there's less innovation. Because what we see is, is using all those indicators I mentioned before, digging into our product intelligence, that language of CPG to say, what are, what's the next thing that the consumers are really asking for and where can we break those barriers, um, is going to allow that smart measured growth so that you know, you're able, whether it's your investors or whether you're trying to attract new investors, that you can actually really show profitable growth through right. innovation. And so when it comes to sort of our case studies, you know, we have examples of brands that, one, may literally say, this is what I think I want to do. Does it work? Help me build the roadmap. And we literally can start at the beginning, all of it, and help them refine their business model and help them really, again, think about 
that um, distribution path? You know, do I start on e-com? Do I start, um, how do I build my social network? How do I, which retailers go first to build my story and refine the model? Because everybody trips a little bit, right? right? right, right. And you want to build in, it used to be that people would try to go directly to some of the really large retailers and often they never got the second chance to refine their business model. They got discontinued and they were excited to start. They didn't make it. So mm. we have many, many, many stories of getting folks in, helping them. We, we get in the trenches, we roll up the sleeves, we say what worked, what didn't work. We look at the data once they launch and then help them refine so that they can really grow. Right. And my last question for you, Catherine, is looking at 2024, what are some themes that you see that are essential for, for brands, but also for retailers, for them to know this year to be successful? So, I think there's really a few mega trends that we're gonna see, not just this year, over the next you know five, even 10 years, to continue to really shape the industry and a lot of the consumer sentiment. Um, you know, because a lot of that sentiment is driven by how differently consumers are getting their education today. You know, rather than it used to be, um, going to the doctor once a year or when you're sick. Now people are listening to podcasts and reading books and you know we're, we're being bombarded with this information and we're all creating our own personal journeys. And so what I think we're seeing is, one, is um, what we tend to call lifespan to health span. In other words, how can I live the longest life I can as healthy and active as I can for quality of life? And there's so many trends under that that I think brands can latch into. A second one I think would be um, global notions, and what I mean by that is this, you can see it on the show floor, this blending of flavors, that's just incredible. It used to be you would go into an international aisle and there's some products there, and even then you'd have, okay, this is my Colombian something, this is my Vietnamese something. I mean, there's like specific nationalities. Now we see companies like Omsom that are like this full range of Asian flavors right. that, are, that are just blending, and you know, that's very representative of what we see and what's happening in our culture. And then finally, I think an undercurrent of all of it is really planetary health and sustainability and regeneration. Um, everyone has been hearing about it, but I think people haven't quite known what to do with it. And we're really coming to the age where I think we're gonna, it's gonna become table stakes to make sure that what your product is made of, the way it's manufactured, the way you're distributing it is all really good for planetary health as well. well awesome. Well, so. Catherine Peters, thank you so much for spending time with the Food Institute and thank sharing you. your insights. Uh, have a great rest of the show. Thanks. Same to you. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brittany Borer from the Food Institute, and I have with me the team from Chomps. Claire, why don't you kick it off for us? Hi everyone, Claire Zorchowski. I am the Senior Director of Business Analytics at CHOMPS and I've been here a little over four and a half years, so excited to pass it over to... Hi, Matt Landon, VP of Strategy, Insights, and Planning. Excited to be talking to you. So let's get started. I've got a bunch of questions for you guys. So how has innovation played a role in CHOMPS' mission and, their, and product development? Well, I think one of the things that's exciting about innovation is when we look at how CHOMP started out, it was really an opportunity to take a category and disrupt it with uh, values that align with the founders' beliefs, whether that's sustainability, nutrition, animal welfare. It really uh, created a lot of excitement by doing something new and different in the space. Yeah. And I think only thing to add there too, so Chomps, we really kind of stick to the core. We're continuing today to really innovate within the meat snack space, um, and we want to do that well, um, and we'll continue to look for opportunities outside the space. So how does Chomps take traditional jerky that everyone knows and loves and yeah. you know, innovate it with approaches to meet the modern consumer's needs? Yeah, you know, we're really doing that today by um, elevating the category and providing the best for you ingredients, so zero sugar, uh, sustainably sourced proteins. The category, you know, historically has a lot of sugar, has a lot of fillers, and we're doing things differently by partnering with sustainably sourced proteins and just providing the best tasting product without all the junk. I think another thing that's important in there is we're, we're a better for you snack, and consumers today are snacking voraciously and need a lot of variety, but they want a, a clean, healthy snack. So 
as we think of ourselves as a snack brand, it's really how, how do we deliver those clean credentials and keep people full. So how do sustainability principles affect product development and supply chain? Yeah, certainly on the product development front, it, it really simplifies our decision-making process. It, it quickly lets us know what's in guardrails and what's out of guardrails. So with the growing popularity of healthy snacks on the market and, and the demand for the natural food category, how does Chomps differentiate itself in such a crowded market? Yeah, great question. Um, <laughs> You know, really since the beginning of Chomps, which was in 2012, we have continued to stick to our mission and values, and we continue to do that today and really only continue to build on it. We we don't do anything that does not stick to kind of our core values, and we never take any shortcuts. Quality, sustainably sourced proteins, zero sugar are all so important to us, and we will never, you know, stray from there. So for us, I think our consumers can really count on us for consistency of quality, consistency of message, and know that they're consistently going to be getting a really great tasting stack. And what role does um, what role does innovation in flavors and formats yeah. play in product innovation and uh, market expansion? Yeah, definitely. Um, for us, really over the last year, we've really been innovating in both flavor and pack type. Um, it's been a pretty exciting time of the year because we've come out with new flavors that have not only stuck, but they've also proven to be completely incremental to our existing portfolio. Um, so flavors are extremely important to us and we're going to continue to look to innovate there. Um, the category, right, it, some of the most popular flavors are teriyaki, barbecue. Today, right, it's hard to bring those flavors to sticks in a zero sugar line, but we're continuing to look for ways to make that happen, but not straying away from our mission and values. Yeah, so in, in market expansion, we're always looking to meet the consumer where they want to have that snacking occasion. So we're always evaluating different channels, different retailers. Um, but I think most importantly, we're always making sure that we're, we have the consumer on our mind and that's who we're working for. So we want to make sure that everything we do serves a job for the consumer and, and, and that we can do it better than maybe their alternatives today. So that really guides everything we're doing. Um, but we're excited about the C-Store channel. We're excited about all of our existing partners and just bringing in winning offerings. Great. And final question. Um, looking ahead, what are some of the biggest challenges you anticipate in the market and the near future for this brand? And how are you prepared to tackle them? Well, right now we're, we're really focused on what's in front of us, keeping our heads down and working and, and staying true to our values. And we're delivering what consumers want. So sure there's going to be bumps in the road, but I think if we stay focused and stay disciplined, we're, gonna, we're not going to get off course. We have a special guest today, Andrew Henkel, president of retail. Hey, how are you? Good, good, good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's talk about retail. Right? Yes. So retail industry has gone through a tremendous change over the past couple of years. As the head of the retail division of Spins, what can you tell us about where retailers are today? Yeah, I think it's an interesting climate, right? So we've gone through an interesting period where uh, natural and like better for you foods have taken off substantially in the conventional marketplace. And that's meant that actually the the independent and natural focused retailers have actually had to up their game in terms of you know using data more effectively to find uh, that next breakthrough item right uh, finding like who's going to be the next superstar uh, foraging has just become a lot tougher in this marketplace that's right um, so tell us how there are um, some specific ways that they're using data to stay competitive yeah so I mean one of the big things is you know taking a look at um, how brands are performing um, at a very granular level, right? Uh, we always say that velocity is the king of metrics and understanding you know, where a brand is selling today, how quickly is it turning, it gives you a lot of faith to know that actually if you bring that brand into your assortment, you're gonna get those turns and it's gonna be worth your while to invest behind that founder. Absolutely. Um, and let's talk a little bit about e-commerce. Yes. Right? So e-commerce continues to grow their market share as a, as a percentage of overall um, dollar, dollar share. Right. 
where is the e-commerce uh, headed over the next few to five years, and how are how are independents and national chains adapting to that to that online strategy? Yeah, so actually, uh, you know, it used to be a debate about whether it's. Uh, in store or online, and now the discussion is really about and. It's about e-com and in store. Shoppers are increasingly using e-com when they're in the store to research products. So for retailers, it's really critical to have the competitive advantage of really strong product content in their e-com applications because if I'm a shopper in the store and I'm looking on shelf, I want to research that product and I want to go to that retailer's site dig into the product, what attributes does it have, what certifications, does it fit with my diet and lifestyle? You know, so finding out those details in an e-com presence becomes incredibly uh, critical. The other thing is that you can start to power more of your loyalty and understand specific consumer preferences, right, through that data. So that you can target the shopper with things to build baskets and grow the size of the overall basket. Got it. I want to drill down into the details of some of the data that Spins is able to, 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 to provide. Right. So a big theme is innovation. Right? right. So when you're working with retailers, obviously you guys provide them with that transaction data. How do, how do retailers use that, use that data to think about, hey, this is a type of product that they would want on shelves, or maybe maybe even ship things on, on the product shelf. Can you share a little bit more about that process? Absolutely, so there's really two parts of it, right? One part of it is uh, looking at how the product is performing. Uh, so that is a bit of the story of, you know, how quickly is it turning at shelf where it's selling today. But the other piece of it is that increasingly retailers have specific standards for products that they want to bring into their assortment. That's where attributes come in. So the attributes that we overlay onto the point of sale data actually tells the retailer, does this product qualify for you know, submission into my, into my set? Uh, you know, lots of retailers today say, I don't want to include products that have X, Y, Z ingredient. Or I do want to find more products that are regenerative. Or I do want to find more products that are sustainable. So it's both the, the additive features and the features that you don't want in the products. And using our attributes overlaid with the performance data is a winning equation to figure out who you can bring into your assortment. I, lo I love the fact that you guys have those attributes. For 2024, what are the top attributes that uh, retailers should be focused on this year? Um, I think some of the biggest things are, uh, number one, we've seen a big rise uh, in a lot of uh, uh, products uh, that traditionally were called sort of international products. Uh, just increasing as the population is diversified, uh, consumers are just more and more interested in a lot of just really unique, interesting ethnic flavors. Um, and bringing more of that, those great like uh, cultural flavors into uh, the set has become a, is a big trend. Second big thing is sustainability. Sustainability is incredibly huge. So consumers are as equal are equally concerned about how a product tastes as what is the sustainability footprint of the company behind it. Um, and then you know beyond that, I think there's always going to be trends like you know prebiotic sodas continue to be a you know a big a big growth engine. Um, so, but. But at its core, it's about sort of attributes and products that are good for people, good for planet, good for animals, um, and you know, good for the overall sort of you know well-being of our society. So, uh, you know, it's it's increasingly that's sort of the focus of people's consumption. Awesome. Well, Andrew Henkel, thank you so much for spending time with the Food Institute. It was and such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. with Megan DiStefano. She is the head of strategic growth at Ingredion. Thank you for joining me Thanks today. Thanks for having me. So my first question for you is, could you tell us about Ingredion? What is it in a nutshell? Yes, in a nutshell, we delight in the first bite. So what does that mean? We are a food ingredient solutions company, all plant-based. Uh, we service 18,000 customers around the world. And beyond ingredients, we really help our customers understand the trends what consumers love, and formulate a product that consumers will love and come back to the shelf to buy every time. And what does innovation look like at Ingredion? So at Innovation, you know, we have a number of patents for new technologies. In addition, we have 32 idea labs around the world where we collaborate with customers and co-create 
with them in the lab for the locations that they're in around the world so that we really get the right tastes and flavors for the communities that they're in. And what are some of the trending product solutions that Ingredion is providing for CPG companies? Well, we're really trying to meet our customers where they are, which is where their consumers are. And so we see more and more consumers kind of wanting it all, right? I mean, we want it to be healthier, we want high protein, we want lower sugar, we want high fiber, we want it sustainable, but it still has to taste great, right? No one is gonna go back to the shelf to buy it once they try it once if it doesn't taste great. And so we're really servicing those health benefit areas as well as with our application development, ensuring that it really brings the whole package together and it tastes great. So really bringing that consumer eating experience alive. And speaking of the consumer, how are evolving consumer preferences uh, affecting these innovations? Well, I think at Spins, you talked about the, the value-driven consumer, and we see it that way as well. So we see consumers wanting locally sourced, wanting you know ethical work environments. We also see them really wanting great health ingredients, like we talked about with this high fiber, high protein, plant-based proteins in particular, sugar reduction. You know, 80 some percent of consumers are really wanting to eat healthier for their diet. The number one ingredient they want to eliminate is sugar. Uh, they all want natural ingredients, and so we can offer that. We have phenomenal stevia-based sweeteners, which allows us to reduce or eliminate sugar. We have the most patents in the world in that space. We have plant-based proteins, um, in particular pea protein, as well as some other protein flours, um, and some great prebiotics and fibers. And so all of that allows our customers to make products that have the right claims on pack like no sugar, high protein, high fiber, while still making sure that the food tastes great. And I like that you mentioned sugar reduction because that snowballs right into the next question. So sugar reduction is a key trend that we at the Food Institute and SPINS mm -hmm. have been tracking for the past few years now. And so in what ways is in Ingredion addressing that particular consumer need in its ingredients? Yes. So we have stevia as well as other sugar reduction ingredients, and we're spending a lot of time innovating in that space. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the sustainability we have as well there. So we are the only brand that understands the from seedling all the way to the end product. We're 100% traceable. We're focused on worker ethics and safety. 100% of our farmers are, are contracted and sign a code of ethics. And so, you know, we're really innovating in terms of sustainability. We're also innovating in terms of taste. I mean, Stevia has come a long way in terms of taste. It tastes great now. Um, and in addition, really bringing, using more of the leaf and different technologies that allow us to be able to put Stevia in more applications so that we can reduce sugar in more applications and fit it right into how our customers are already manufacturing so it doesn't cost them money to change how they manufacture their products. So that's where we're really focused. And my final question for you is, um, Ingredion CEO recently spoke about Ingredion's innovation surrounding texture and yeah. taste. Can you share more details on how this type of innovation might impact consumer growth in health products? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, the consumer eating experience is so important and so, Consumers think about how it tastes, but a really big piece of taste is texture. And we really specialize in texture at Ingredion, and we really specialize in bringing all of that together with our, with our great application uh, technologies. And so that is really what we're delivering here is how do we bring great health benefits that still taste great, and a big piece of that is that texture behind how the ingredient is built. So you know, putting all those pieces together is what we specialize in. Well, there you have it, Megan DiStefano, Head of Strategic Growth at Ingredion. Thank you so much for your time and your insights today. Thank you for having me. We're here at the Spins booth and we have a special guest, Will Quartner from Prelude Growth. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So for those that don't know about Prelude Growth, can you share a little bit about the company and your investment strategy? Absolutely. We are a mushroom firm based in New York. We invest exclusively in iProth December brands. 
Um, you pick and then partner with probably two opportunities a year. Um, and a lot of time in food and beverage, beauty, personal care, health and wellness. Um, typically we make investments of between 10 to $50 million to give the opportunity and really try to partner with each brand uh, while we realize that potential in any way we do. Awesome. Well, in 2024, what are some key investment themes that you guys are focused on at your firm? We think a lot about uh, themes from a category perspective first um, and try to identify categories that are advantaged and aligned with long-term consumer tailwinds. So for us, some of those included uh, clean ingredients, nutrient dense products, high protein, low sugar, flavors, uh, sustainability. Uh, and these things cross categories tend to endure from year to year. So they don't change that often if we put the right ones. Uh, and our portfolio is reflected, I think, well, readers in each of those dynamic trends. Awesome. Well, you, we're at the right place at Expo West 2024. Um, so, Will, how have consumers changed their eating and, and drinking behavior over the past couple of years? Yeah, it's really dynamic. I think it's always changing, always evolving. Um, I think from our view, uh, consumers are more focused than ever uh, trying to get protein in, in any way that they can. I think they want older, authentic flavors, whether it's ethnic flavors, spice. Uh, one of our portfolio brands is a company called Hachan. It's a Japanese-American barbecue sauce brand that has really resonated with a large set of consumers. Fly by Jing, which is uh, a modern Chinese condiment brand, actually uh, done quite well. Uh, Bonza is a nutrient-dense chickpea-based pasta and pizza brand. Um, it's an amazing product. You can see just check it out. That touches on a lot of these trends. So looking across the show, there's just uh, it's so exciting to see all the, the new stuff on Yeah, well, there must be a ton of companies wanting investment from Prelude. How do you identify the one or two companies that really stand out from the, from the crowd? Anything that you can share there? We look at a number of different dimensions. Uh, I think each company has, whether it's strength on a brand that is really authentic and um, messages something that the consumer that really resonates with them, uh, the product differentiation, nutrient density, uh, better for you. This haste is always critical. Um, we spend a lot of time in the data. We're very data focused. Um, we leverage things and other tools to identify which products and brands really perform best on shelf at retail. Ultimately, that is the most important metric. It's a lot of time. Sales growth, unit growth, all those things. And then I think, look, team is critical. Mm -hmm. we, we really need to get to look teams build the team, and again, taking a step back, is this in a category that we think is aligned with long-term trends, that has the opportunity ahead of it, and, um, and is strategically valuable to your large set of trends and pitch companies. Got it. And my last question for you, Will, is after you make an investment, how do you make sure that the innovation cycle is still happening at your portfolio companies? Well, I think ultimately we're investors at the board level um, and we support our companies to the best of our ability. They are the ones doing all the magic work. Um, but our role, in my view, is our role is really to help them contextualize and the frame of reference for where the most attractive and risk-adjusted returns are for their time, energy, capital. So whether it's sizing, by the way, innovation comes in many things. So, Packaging innovation. Yeah. One of our brands is a company called Blue Link, which is a household care, personal care brand that eliminates plastic from all of its products. It's an amazing business that's innovated all over again in the packaging. Uh, it's product innovation. So, Ancient Bonza, their chickpea based products are in the right. double the protein, third less carbs, and triple the fiber stretch cost. Okay, we help them think about it, and iterate on it and support them wherever we can, but which way the, the teams are the ones that do all the way not well, Awesome, well you have an awesome job at a great firm, Will Quartner, partner at uh, Prelude Grill. Thanks for spending time with Food Institute and Spins. Thank you for having me. From discernment on investment strategies to achieving innovation through data collection and beyond, you need look no further than to Spins for the latest insights and information on the natural products CPG sector. Also, be sure to check out foodinstitute.com for the latest news and trends in the food industry. For the Food Institute, I'm Brittany Borer.